How are you all doing? Good. Good. So I have for you three poems this evening, um, and all of them are from a manuscript that I'm currently working on, um, which brings together immigrant culture, um, Midwestern culture, queer culture, um, and lets it all play together. So this is the first poem in the book, and it is called Prologue to the Shameful. In New York, my girlfriend comes back to bed, hair toweled wild and kinked with wetness. The lingering smell of cunt, sweet beneath almond and aloe. I press my hips down into the ballast of her brass bed frame, rocking like the immigration ship that delivered my mother from Naples. I have learned the first ships had Spanish commissions, but Cristoforo was Italian. We are good at living in the flat boundaries of Illinois and calling it India. We are good at wearing carnage like a mask to Carnivale and then tossing it aside, easy as discovery. In New York, my girlfriend leaves for work and I lie in the ocean of her sheets rubbing my clit and thinking, this is the world I have been fantasizing about my entire Midwestern life. This is called Boundaries. Behind the sawdust veiled air, the screeching and the pounding, my grandfather built furniture. He couldn't talk English, couldn't speak about the war. In 12-hour shifts, he hid pieces of himself in the copper knobs, in the waves of carved woodwork like the coast of the Adriatic, a home he had lost and then shut away inside an attic trunk. Now it's in my mother's basement, still concealing the framed map of the Istrian Peninsula inside Italian borders. After his funeral, my mother sat fingering the leg of an end table. She said they didn't tell the soldiers what was going on in the war camps. He was only fighting to keep the farmhouse he was born in, for his brothers and his new wife who he wanted to take there, to live always bumped up with the sea. I remember watching his fingertips yellowed with tobacco, tearing through skin and yanking bones from mackerels. The fish's seamed eyes shone like sequins as he ripped pieces of flesh and placed them onto my tongue, salty and dry, his fingers bitter. And the last poem is new. Um, it is called After Jackie and Megan Were Attacked, so I apologize in advance for ending on a bit of a downer. Um, but this was written on the land just this past Tuesday. After Jackie and Megan Were Attacked. At the three o'clock glass blowing demonstration in Corning, New York, you are showing off. Dipping your rod into the color crystals, working the iron, threatening to brand one of the beauties sitting in the front row. What would you like, sweetheart? A swan. Of course she wants a swan. Don't you know the gaffers in Murano have been doing this for centuries? How precisely, carefully, each cane of color is divided into the thinnest ligaments spun together into a murine? How they work blind, unable to see the minifiori until after the cane is sliced into beads. A Sofia Toro will be in the oven up to his elbows, documenting each spin of the glass with flames in his retinas. When he pulls back from the fire, he will only see his hands working in a world of green aura and fluid, dark orbs. To make any object, any effigy, he will wait until the glass consents to an exchange of breath. A gift from his lungs for a gift from the earth. 
exempt from persecution by the lion's mouth, by the Palazzo Ducale and its tortures, while the rest of Venice cobbled together their fears and judgments. And here I am, watching you handle something so pure, watching you set it ablaze, watching you break it. You let the glass cool too quickly, and the violet streak of swan's neck snapped as you flicked your iron through the smoke. Don't worry, sweetie, you winked. There's plenty more where that came from.